So many of us live with regrets. The truth is we should be living in such a way that we have no regrets because we lived a meaningful life. As you discover your God-given purpose, you are truly fulfilled and you're inspired to help others. My purpose in this show is to build your faith so you learn to find complete fulfillment and joy in this life as we prepare for the next. Legendary faith is faith that continues throughout the generations. It starts with us and ends with Jesus. What is your destiny? Join me in this journey to discover how to build a legacy that never ends. Hang tight, legend. God has the very best in store for you. Welcome, everyone, to Legendary Faith. I hope this podcast finds you healthy, well, and inspired to live your best year ever. And so yesterday, I celebrated 12 years of sobriety, 12 years alcohol and drug free. And so today, I can take a deep breath and know that with God, all things are possible. And so this year was significant because I truly have received God's goodness. And I believe in the very best to come. You know, we all walk through different seasons in our life. And we make it through one season. And we are encouraged for yet the best to come, right? And so that's where I'm at. I'm at a season and I just made it through yet another obstacle and made it to a different level in my journey. And I have faith. I have greater faith as a result. And you know, even though the devil still, he's not giving up anytime soon because I'm not giving up, right? I, I'm believing in the very best to come. And the devil knows this. And I believe that that's what's coming against you as well. And I'm here to encourage you that like me, you can have faith for better things to come as well. And so 12 years ago, I walked into rehab and I was in a long black coat, overcoat, and a ball cap. And I was, I was hiding and I was so ashamed because I listened to the voices, the negativity the accusations of the devil coming at me. I wasn't strong enough spiritually to withstand all those attacks. And I listened to the wrong voices. You know, once you're in a deep, dark pit, it's hard to get out of. And many people can relate to that, especially in today's world. You know, and I feel the ever-increasing attacks Not just when you look around, but you know, you feel it. In between podcasts, my voice is attacked. It was attacked today. I started coughing. Mind you, I am getting over COVID. (laughs) But I didn't have coughing attacks. I just, I didn't have my voice, really. And there's a pattern, you know, in between spreading the gospel and sharing test good the good news in between there there's these attacks and it's like the devil is literally trying to shut me up well guess what <laughs> i'm not going anywhere and when i do go somewhere when i do leave this earth i know where i'm going and i can be encouraged by that as well You know, because of that deep, dark pit that I was in, I learned a few things. I learned that God, as long as I keep my faith in Him, that the best can come out of that. 
that there is still hope. You know, and you go through enough of those, you just, you have faith that you're going to make it on the other side. And God gives us the grace for the place. So if you're in a deep, dark place right now, be encouraged that if you're not at peace with that, that that's, that's the devil's working. The devil is trying to distract you. It is what it is. And you've got to be encouraged. You have to remain in God's peace. So, 12 years ago, like I said, I walked into rehab and I was hiding and ashamed. I felt dead physically, mentally, and spiritually. And so I titled this podcast, Dead Woman Walking, Brought to Life Again, because I literally felt like death. You know, and you literally, when you're, you feel like death, you want to be dead. But I knew that was an option. I wasn't going to kill myself. But sometimes that's where we need to be for change. And when if we have faith in God, we know that he's going to bring better out of a disastrous situation. But it's easier said than done when you feel like death <laughs> or when your body is in deep, dark pain and there's nothing that can be done. You know, and that was my latest challenge within the last year is pain, physical pain. But once again, I was encouraged because I knew of what God has helped me with in the past. And I was encouraged by your stories, by everyone else's stories of hope. You know, you look around and we have compassion on each other because many of us are getting sick. You know, and many of us can be encouraged that through the pain, there is there is a bright side. But we have to press on in faith. And so the timeline for my life was, you know, everything was going great. Oh, yes, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But then there's always a disruption, right? And But that's where I needed to be. I needed to be disrupted. Now, I didn't think it was going to be in the way that it happened. But it humbled me. I cried out to God, God, help me. I surrendered. And maybe that's where you're at today. Maybe you need to surrender so that you can receive your miracle. Because that's what it takes for change. You must surrender. You must cry out to God. Now, I cried out. And I needed to be crying out because I literally would have been dead. And that's when the miracle happened. But it doesn't end after that. We, there's much more to come. You still have a journey to go through. And so I'm continuing where I left off. 2 Corinthians 12, 9 says, But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you. For my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore, I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses so that Christ's power may rest on me. Oh, I sure was weak. But God displays his power through me, through you and me. It is when we are weak that God is strong. And God's not going to allow you, if he's working in you, he's not going to let you fail. He's going to be showing his power. So now's not the time to give up. 
Cry out to God. Surrender. You don't want to be dead man walking. Yes, I was a dead woman walking, brought to life again. But God's power worked through my weakness. And because of the power of God, I'm alive again. I feel alive. My soul has woken up. Now I have a testimony. And if you're tired of feeling like dead man walking, dead woman walking, then it's time to do something to be brought to life again because there is life inside of you. If you're still breathing and if you truly are at the end of life, then God's going to give you the grace for that too. But it's not going to be fear. So if you're alive listening to this, what needs to come to life again in your life? What have you allowed to die within you? Are you walking around feeling like death every day? Because that's not God's destiny for you or me. And that's what gives me hope and encouragement to keep moving forward is the fact that God has brought me out of a deathly situation and has brought life in life within me. Like I feel encouraged and so inspired to just spread the good news of Christ, even despite pain that still happens in my body. I know that it always makes me stronger. So there are many different seasons in life. What season are you currently in that you need to come out of? Starts with faith. But then you got to get to work. Are you believing to be alcohol and drug free? Take action. Do something. And yes, praying to God is doing something. Because he will help you in whatever measure you need to be helped. Even if it's crying in your bathroom floor, crying out to God, as I remember doing. And it didn't happen overnight. I wasn't saved overnight it was a process but help did come are you believing for your child to be healed from alcohol or drugs i listened to sean stevenson on his model health show if you haven't listened to it check it out it's a great podcast and one of his podcasts talked about how opiates is the number one killer for ages 18 to 45. The number one killer. Opiates. Drugs. Coming for children. And to me, that's serious. And so, yeah, I want to create awareness and hope and encouragement. The devil's not going to shut me up. He may keep me silent for a week or two in in and out. I know it's to be expected now, but I also need know to be prepared. But we need to raise awareness and help each other. Are you looking to be healthier? Well, start reading more. Start taking action. One small step at a time. Just cut out the Oreos. (laughs) Are you looking to be happier? Well, aren't we all? It's a rough world out there. But God wants us to spread the good news. The good news. And the great news about the gospel is that there's always good in there. Even in pain. 
I mean, look what Jesus suffered. We can't imagine that possibly, but because of what he did, we're, we have another chance. So let's talk about it. Don't be ashamed about it because life truly is too short. So let's, let's talk about the good stuff, the stuff that is meaningful and that gives us hope and encouragement for better things to come. Because I don't know how much more hopeful you can get than knowing that when you die, and we don't know when this is going to happen, but we can be encouraged that when we do die, that there's a light at the end of the tunnel. I've been in that dark despair. And I don't like it. I couldn't imagine going to hell and having to live in that torture. I don't want to be in deep, dark despair. I want to know that I have hope. I want to know that I have hope for tomorrow. And I want that for you too, because that's what this life is about. It's about helping other people. And teaching the good news. So if you want to be resuscitated, you've got to try. And I know it's hard to try when you feel like death. But you know what? I walked into that rehab looking like death, feeling like death. So ashamed, but God has brought me back to life and now I'm a living testimony and there are many out there that have made it through and you need to get in touch with them. You need to listen to more of those stories than dating shows or being obsessed with the NFL teams or, you know, whatever it is. We can have balance in our lives, but we've got to start talking about meaningful things. We've got to hope again and dream again. The very fact that I was still alive when I felt like death meant that there was hope, right? And there's hope for you too. You're alive too. And I'm believing with you. That you will fulfill your purpose so that you too can help others. Your day is coming. Become obsessed with the journey. And before you know it, you're going to step into your God-given destiny. So thank you so much for joining me on this podcast. I have finally got my voice back. Like I said, in between podcasts, I I see I just have issues. And this last go round, it was COVID, and I lost my voice. And then I I tried to make a podcast today, and I'm here. I made it through. But in the very beginning, I started coughing, and so that's what I'm saying. When when we're spreading the good news, there is going to be opposition. But, you know, we're supposed to rejoice in persecution because we know it's for the better. That God is working all things out for the good. And then you just feel it. You feel it inside. You know there's, you have hope. And so thank you for your reviews. And if you would like to make a review, you can head on over to Apple Podcasts. I would greatly appreciate it appreciate it and to find out more from me you can kindly go to alissamassey.com and I'll be working more on my blogging and trying to get things just back in motion and my next episode is arm yourself with hope thanks again for listening today and remember that the best is yet to come 